Hello everyone, welcome to Coding Decoded. My name is Sanjay Nadeja. I am working as Technical Architect SD4 at Adobe and here I present Day 8th of July Lead Code Problem. The question that we have in today is House Paint 3. This question is a hard level question on Lead Code. However, I don't feel the same and I am pretty sure that subscribers of Coding Decoded would feel in the same way. Why I am saying this? Because th this question is based on the concept of 3D dynamic programming and we have already solved plenty of questions on the lines of 3D DB. If you go and check out the coding decoded SD preparation sheet based on the concept of dynamic programming, then you will find a question named Cherry Pricker 2. And I have marked this question with double asterisk sign, that means it's highly important from interview's perspective. In case you would have done this question before, this question would have been a cakewalk for you. So I would request you guys to kindly go through this video first and then come back to this one and I'm pretty sure that 90% of you would be able to solve today's question by themselves. For those who are not aware of th this cherry picker problem too, let me just help you out. So without further ado, let's quickly walk through the presentation where I'll be talking about the algorithm to go about it in a step by step manner. Paint house 3, lead code 1473. Also in case if you have any doubt understanding this question or if you want to ask anything from me in general, please feel free to drop a message on the telegram group or the discord server of coding decoded both the links are stated below now let's shoot for understanding the definition of the question which is find the neighborhood for the below array and i have taken a sub problem of, out of the question and if it is given to you then what would be the answer for this how do you define a neighborhood the number of consecutive groups that are getting formed so here we have a group wherein the house is painted with color one the next group is painted with color 2, the next group is painted with color 3, the next paint group is painted with color 2 and the next group is painted with color 1. So in total how many groups are formed? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So as per this array configuration, the houses, the neighborhood would come out to be as 5 units. Now let's go and iterate over the question. In the question you are given various houses wherein few of them are not painted. What you are also told, you are also told the number of colors that you have. It will range from 1 till n. That means you can color all the non-painted houses with any color of your choice starting from color 1 to color n. You are also given the cost to color the ith house with color j. So j can vary from 1 till n and i can vary from the number of houses that you have. So this information is also given to you in the form of an array. Also the question specifies that after coloring all the houses, the total number of groups that should be formed should be equal to T. That means for this array configuration, T neighborhood should be the value. Now let's get back to the same example. Here the houses configuration that is given to us is 0, 2, 1, 2, 0. 0 represents that the house is not painted, 2 represents that the house is painted in blue color, but represents that the house is painted in orange color. So one way to think about the algorithm is to try out all possibilities and what we are going to do, we will paint the first house with all possibilities starting from the color 1 up till color n and we will keep on iterating ahead in this entire array. With each, with each iteration, let's see how can we keep track of the target value that we have, the target neighborhood value that we have. So let's hypothetically assume that we first paint this house with color orange. So do I have orange color? No, I don't have orange color over here. So let's assume that orange is same as red. So that means I have painted this house with red color. As a result of which I have created one, uh, one group. Since I have created one group, the target group that I have been looking for the rest of the elements gets reduced to t minus 1. That means one group has been formed in red color and the number of groups that should be formed for the remaining elements should be equal to t minus 1. And what we are going to do, we will recursively iterate over the same algorithm one by one. So let's proceed ahead. The next house that we see happens to be blue in color. Since it's blue in color, what we should be checking, we should be checking what was the previous value of the house. The previous color of the house was red. Since both of them are different, that means they will form two separate groups. Had it been the case that we have painted the first house with blue color, this, this particular house which has already been painted 
would have lied in the same group. Let's try and understand both these cases in detail. So we painted the first house with red color. And since we painted this house with red color, we have created the first group which is of color red. And let's represent it with one. The number of groups that are to be formed for the remaining houses that we have, which in this case is one, two, three, four. So for the rest of the houses, four houses, the number of groups that are to be formed should be equal to t minus one. And again, there could have been two cases. The immediate next house could have been the same color, which is not in this case. The immediate next house happens to be in blue color. So this house is in blue color. As a result of which, we can say that these two houses can't be clubbed together. As a result of which, we have definite that this house would contribute to a new group. As a result of which, we can say that a new group will be formed over here at this particular position and the value of t gets reduced by one further. As a result of which, we can say that for the rest of the houses that we have starting from the second index till the end, one, two, three, rest of the three houses that we have, the number of groups or neighborhoods that are to be formed should be equal to t minus two. So this is the first possible case. And if you carefully see that we need at each index, what is the color of the previous house so that we can make the decision whether the current house can be clubbed with the previous one or not. Here in this case, the house was already painted in blue color and the previous house was painted in red color as a result of which two groups are mandatory to be formed. Had it been the case, the first house was painted in blue color something like this, we would have created the first group and the group count here was 1. The number of groups that are to be formed across the remaining element would have been t minus 1 and the number of houses that we had would have been 4 and let's iterate over to the next house. The next house was already also in blue color and we would have percolated this information from the previous house that the color of the previous house was blue, the color of the current house is again blue as a result of which these two houses became part of the same group. The t value remains the same. It gives us more leverage that more groups can be formed across the remaining elements, which is this one. So the number of remaining houses that we have happens to be three and across these three houses at max t minus one groups can be formed. So this is the crux of the problem. If you have understood this much, you have understood 90% of the algorithm. As per the question, we have to iterate over all possibilities for each house starting from color 1 up till color n and we will be doing this using recursion and since recursions are expensive, in order to optimize the time complexity, the first rule of dynamic programming is to identify overlapping solutions as a result of which we will be using memoization technique. What I am trying to say, let's quickly walk through the coding section and have a look at the algorithm. The first thing that I have done here is to create my DPRA. This DPRA has three indexes to it. The first index represents the house ID. The next in index represents the number of groups that are to be formed for the remaining elements that we have, followed by the color of the last house that was painted. So it has three indexes, M, target and N. And the problem crux lies in writing this DFS method appropriately. In case this DFS method returns the max value, that mean, means this configuration that the question is looking out for with this particular target value is not possible. We have to return minus one in those cases. Otherwise, the value is something other than max. That means such configuration is possible and we have to return that particular value. So let's walk through the DFS method and let's talk about various parameters that are passed through this DFS method. So the first one is houses, pretty simple and straightforward, cost followed by index. So this represents the current index that is to be painted followed by the total number of groups that are to be formed for the remaining elements uh, followed by the color in which the last house was painted followed by the number of colors available. So in case the target goes less than zero that means uh, the target value that we are looking out for is less than zero for the elements that we are to be painted it simply means the configuration is not possible. This is the first abortion condition and we have to return ma minus max value in those cases. Otherwise, what do we do? We check if my I value, the index that I'm currently painting, targeting to be painting, it happens to be greater than or equal to houses dot length. What do we do? We check if target happens to be equal to zero. That means 
they are we have reached the end of the uh, house array that we have and there are no more groups that are to be formed that's a happy case that means we have found out one possibility of answer if that is the case we simply return zero from there otherwise we return max because such a configuration won't be possible let's proceed ahead we this is a very simple case we check whether we have pre computed dp of i target and last color if, if it is already computed we simply reuse it up let's proceed ahead we check if my current house is painted or not painted in case it is painted that means house at the ith index is not equal to 0 uh, that means the house was painted last year we check whether my last color that was being passed in the equation is not equal to the the current house color if that is the case both of no, both of them are not equal as a result of which we'll have to reduce the target count by 1 had it been the case both of them were equal the target count would have remains the same so we reduce the target count depending upon this particular if condition and we invoke the dfs helper method and carefully look at it because the first parameter houses remains the same cost remains the same we increment to the next index in the array the target value remains the same or it it gets reduced by one depending upon this particular condition we pass in houses and the value n again really simple let's proceed ahead next we have created an ans variable we initialize it to max what do we do for each house that was uh, that is set that is still not colored because line 29 was not met that means the current house is not colored we check out for all possibilities of colors that we have starting from color 1 up till color n with with each iteration we are incrementing the color value what do we do we identify the the value that is minimum of, of all the possibilities so let's try and understand this particular equation so this represents the cost of coloring the ith house with with this particular color we add it to the cost that comes from the dfs helper method for coloring the remaining houses so let's walk through this so the first parameter is house the next parameter is cost and since we have already included the cost for coloring this particular index with this particular color we increment to the next index i plus 1 and the interesting part lies over here so what we are doing we are checking whether the last color happens to be not equal to the current color since both of them are not equal that means we are creating two different groups as a result of which we'll have to reduce the target count so whenever both of them are not equal we will reduce the target count by one in case they turn out to be equal the target count remains as it is so this is an interesting statement that i have written and the next parameters are color followed by n so this will become the next color the uh, last color for the subsequent operations uh, in the recursion tree and once we are out of this loop we have identified the minimum answer that comes and we assign it to dp of i target and last color and we simply return that out so let's try and submitting this accepted 70% faster it's pretty good with this let's wrap up today's session I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I'll be adding this question since it's a very interesting question based on the concept of 3D DP to coding decoded SD preparation sheet, and I am attaching this link as well in the description. So if you are interested in revising the entire dynamic programming series, then this sheet is for you. And I'm pretty sure once you will go through this sheet, dynamic programming will be on your tips. Thank you. Take care.